Okay, everyone. This is, uh, this is what we're trying to achieve here. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Today I'm going to be doing a book haul. I'm very excited about this book haul because it is a strange stack of books that I have here. Um, I actually kind of want to issue you a challenge because, <laughs> because I've chosen such an eclectic, strange mix of books. I think that I will mention at least one book you've never heard of. So if you go through this video and you know every, like you've heard of every book that I mention here, you get some sort of a gold star, but because this is a weird pile. <laughs> As you just saw, I put the pile down and I see no other option really than to just go from top to bottom. So in no real order, from top to bottom. Here are some books that I got over the last few months. I started quarantine by really not buying any books at all. I thought I really love buying books in person, in bookshops. I'll do that once the quarantine is over. But obviously this isn't ending anytime soon. So I slowly started buying books from online bookstores and I did that over and over and over and over and over again. And then as things got harder and sadder, I bought more and more books. And now here we are with like 21 books to show you. So these two books are some of the latest I got in the mail. They are There There by Tommy Orange and In My Own Moccasins, A Memoir of Resilience by Helen Knott. So these are both um, books that I picked up from Iron Dog Books, which is an independent bookshop in Vancouver that is run by um, a First Nation staff, which is really cool. So this book, I've literally never heard someone say a bad thing about. Like I've never heard anyone review this that didn't love it. Um, and so it's about 12 different characters, all from different native communities, working towards getting to a powwow. And I love the idea of reading so many different characters, but that are all moving towards the same central point. That's something that, you know, is kind of common. Think about like the Avengers. <laughs> if you're thinking about the Avengers, like everyone's bubbling to the same point or the same fight or the same moment, but everyone's going in such different directions. It's really fun. So it's also like the font is pretty big and stuff and it's pretty short. So I should be able to read this quickly. Should I start like a stack back here? If I put this, if I put it way back here, we'll start a stack. It's going to tumble though. Um, In My Own Moccasins was a book that I had not heard of myself, but I saw it on, I think already most people are going to be like, yep, haven't heard of that one. So this is great because it's a Canadian author who lives in Northeastern British Columbia. And the reason that I picked it up was because it was on Iron Dog Books website as a recommended book. So um, I thought, you know, trust the experts. And I love how little this book is. Like, can you tell how little it is? You know what? I'll just go to my next book so that you can see, like, this is a normal hardcover and this is like, it's tiny. It's also very slim. Um, really love the shape of it. So excited about that. It also has the fancy French flaps. That's, that's the sign of quality right there. But then if we move on to the next one, it's a beautifully foolish endeavor by Hank Green. So, Lot of, uh, lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of, I'm really excited. <laughs> so this is um, the sequel to an absolutely remarkable thing. A book that I read two years ago when it came out and you know, I thought I would like it, but I didn't expect to love it as deeply as I did. I ended up just absolutely adoring that book. I cannot get over that book. I'm rereading it right now. I meant to reread it earlier so that I feel like there's this one, this one boy right here. I don't know what that guy's doing. Um, I meant to reread it earlier, I didn't. So I'm currently rereading it so that I can jump into this one, really remembering all of the backstory and so that I can get the full impact of this. I'm so excited, I'm nervous. I'm nervous in the way that you are nervous whenever you're reading the sequel to a book you love. Like, will it hold up? Will the characters end up happy? Will the world end up okay? Um, I've been reading a lot of books about the internet this year. I've kind of read a lot over the years, but especially this year. And so I'm very excited to get Hank Green's perspective on the internet and on humanity. Um, okay. I decided to be smart and start a second pile. <laughs> so this book already again, I think I'm going to stump you all with this one. Founders at Work, Stories of Startups Early Days by Jessica Livingston. Um, remember when I just used to read YA? <laughs> remember when I read 
like books that were popular and people cared no longer. Now I'm reading a book about startups because again, I'm very fascinated on the internet, but I'm also very fascinated and pursuing starting my own online business. No, nothing to report quite yet, but there is a lot of learning to be done, right? And I love right at the end of the introduction, Jessica Livingston puts it perfectly. I'm especially hoping this book inspires people who want to start startups. The fame that comes with success makes startup founders seem like they're a breed apart. Perhaps if people can see how these companies actually started, it will be less daunting for them to envision starting something of their own. I hope a lot of the people who read these stories will think, hey, these guys were once just like me. Maybe I could do it too. So it's this book where she interviews a lot of massive names in the startup world. Um, and talks to them about the first year of their business to kind of debunk this myth that you need to have a lot of money or you need to know exactly what you're doing. And I've started flipping through it and it's so much fun. I cannot wait to read this book. I saw it recommended all over the internet in different places um, for stuff about startups and businesses and internet businesses. So I'm excited, even though it looks like a textbook, I think it'll be fun. <laughs> Okay, the next one I got um, sent to me by the publisher and it is The Great Gatsby, the graphic novel. So obviously by F. Scott Fitzgerald, but this um, is illustrated by I. M. Morton and the text is adapted by Fred Fordham. So, oh man, let me just give you a flippy through here so you can get a gist of the art style. Um, what can I say? I love me a graphic novel. I love The Great Gatsby. So I'm here for a Great Gatsby adaptation. Will it, will, I don't know, will I love it? I'm not sure. I read um, the adaptation of Animal Farm. I can show you. This boy, I read this boy earlier this year. You can, let me show you the art style. Um, and I absolutely loved it. So I think that this, this trend to do adaptations of classic novels into graphic novels can work. So we shall see, we shall see. Up next, we have Half Breed by Mariah Maria Campbell. So this is one, excitingly, I started on audiobook and I um, am loving the audiobook. So I'm really glad to be doing both because she reads the audiobook. And I mean, there is nothing I love more <laughs> than a memoir read by an author. I, okay, I'll put a poll up here. Please vote in this poll because I, po I posted this on Instagram and I, I said something that I believed was not controversial, but it turns out that I was like people, there was pushback. <laughs> Do you prefer it when a book is read by the author? Now, here's the thing with memoirs, 100% of the time, I think they should be read by the author. They just, they, they, it's their story. Let them tell their story. But I can totally, I get it with, some authors don't have like a beautiful reading voice or they're just shy or not that great at reading out loud for, you know, seven hours. Um, but for the most part, I prefer it when the author reads it. I'm gonna be honest with you on that one. So this is another memoir about an indigenous woman who grew up here in Canada. Um, what really excited me and originally intrigued me was the title, Half Breed. Um, obviously a slur um, and uh, like a controversial thing to call someone, but I'm a half breed. So I'm allowed to say it as a mixed race person. Um, I've always been so interested in learning more about the Métis people. I've heard that this is brutal, but I'm really excited to read it. On to a very different book, Beach Read. <laughs> Could it be more opposite? Beach Read by Emily Henry. This is a book that I bought because my best friend Raylene recommended it to me. We run a podcast together. I will link the podcast down below. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know. She really put, she pitched it so well. And when I read the description, it's about two authors, an author who writes very kind of happy, fluffy books and an author who writes very depressing, sad, serious books. They're both having writer's block. They both go to this beach to have like kind of a retreat for a summer and they decide to challenge each other to switch genres. He'll write something that ends happily and she'll write something more serious. And that just sounds like so much fun. Like to me, reading about authors falling in love and having a writing challenge, that sounds perfect. And I've heard really good things about this. So I'm, ho I'm hoping that I like it um, as much as I've heard everyone else liking it. And seriously good flop, okay? On the flop test, muy bueno. Uh, I got three more Canadian books for you up next, which is exciting. Um, kind of, they match in color scheme. A mind spread out on the ground. Love the title. 
by Alicia Elliott. These are essays written by the author who is an indigenous woman um, raised in North America. And I think, again, the second essay is called Half Breed, a racial biography in five parts. That was like the essay that convinced me to get it. I was just really excited to read it. So here I am, um, love the cover. And this one I'm waiting for um, my library to give me the audiobook because I just, I, I heard the sample and the sample sounded great. Um, but then I also got Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak. Tanya Tagak is a Canadian Inuit throat singer. And if you've never heard throat singing, I mean, I just recommend you type it into Google. This book also has pictures in it. Actually, this is a great plug. I've got a great opportunity to plug something here. So allow me if you will. I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks through my local library, but when my library doesn't have a book or when, you know, it has it, but it says it's gonna take 18 weeks to arrive and I can't wait, I've been using Libro FM. They're not sponsoring this video, but I have an affiliate link down in the description. If you wanna check it out, um, I get a little affiliate knockback, but you get a couple cool like free books and stuff. And it is the greatest because you can support your local bookstore. It's not owned by Amazon like Audible is. So it supports local bookshops. It helps like an independent book loving company. So it's really cool and I've been using it a lot. I'm currently listening to Digital Minimalism and I'm very lo much loving it. Um, and I really like the service. I really love their team over there. So check it out, link down below. But yeah, like I said, not sponsored. I just think they're really cool. And the last book, um. On, the, on this little section. What is this haul? Like, this is what happens when I don't go into a bookstore to buy books. Like, because I'm just, like, every, I'll just see a book online. I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds great. Buy it. And then, like, it shows up three weeks later. I'm like, what a strange purchase that isn't related to anything else in my life. This came uh, because I saw my friend talk about it on Instagram and she really sold it as this like lesbian, queer, gothic, spooky, um, but fun story. It's that classic story of like, you drop out of university and you go back to your hometown, but some gothic-y, spooky, ghosty stuff happens somewhere called Crystal Beach. I'm not too sure. It's also like a very strange shape for a book. Can you, do you agree with me? Look, I'll show you a, um, a, a normal sized hardcover. And so you can see how square it is. It's like a very square short, stout. <laughs> it's stout. <laughs> okay, these next two books, uh, are they the same book? No, but is there a theme here? Yes. So I read this book earlier this year. I talked about it in a video um, where I discussed like taking a week off of social media. I reviewed it there. How to Do Nothing, Resisting the Attention Economy by Jenny O'Dell. I listened to this on audiobook. Again, I super recommend this audiobook. So if you're uh, wanting to try out that Libro FM thing, try this one. It was a short, fun, interesting, and thought-provoking read. I really enjoyed it. And so when I finished it, because um, I listened to it through my library, I really wanted a physical copy. So I picked this up and I love, I mean, they're pink. The end pages are pink. I love that. But when I finished this book, I was very curious about like other books similar, discussing, unplugging, living in the now. <laughs> and I found Do Nothing, How to Do Nothing and Do Nothing, not related, not by the same person or anything, but this has a sloth on it. So obviously winning some sort of an award there. The subtitle on this one is Resisting the Attention Economy. And the subtitle on this one is How to Break Away from Overworking, Overdoing and Underliving. Like there's a bit, there's an element of cheese here, right? For sure. But I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, I'm, I'm waiting on the audiobook, still uh, from Libby. So I might break and get it from Libro FM if it, cause I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to read it. Stop sabotaging our well being. put work aside and start living instead of doing. So I think I, good ideas will be pulled from here. All right, up next, what do I got? What, I mean, Jesus, this is just the strangest <laughs> I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. I love reading. I just love reading everything. Um, I get often asked like, what's your favorite genre? And I just panic because I don't know what my favorite genre is anymore. It used to be like young adult contemporary. That was the genre I read the most of. That was the genre that I like would just read everything of and like generally enjoyed. But now I've just, been wanting to read everything. Everything excites me. So 
Like, what are we talking about here? Here we've got The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. This is a controversial book in my life because I read it in grade nine when I was 13, 14 in high school, and I hated it. I really disliked it. But what I realized years later was that I don't think I hated the book. I think I hated the class and the two things got conflated. I hated my grade nine English class. I thought it was the worst class ever. I hated going, I hated English. I hated like everything about it. <laughs> it was just horrible. And so I think that this book suffered because when I think about this book that is about an apocalypse, um, a nuclear apocalypse that has affected um, the way that people are born and bor people are born with different deformities. And if you are born with a deformity, you are kind of sent away to the badlands kind of an idea. Um, and it's about like purity and religion and all of those things sound like I would actually really enjoy it now. So I think I've got to give this book another shot. Wow, that's a tiny font. That's unfortunate. I'll tell you that right now, that's unfortunate. It's a classic tale of like a teenager, young a young person um, realizing that maybe the government around them isn't as smart as it seems. And then the other book that I got is I'm laughing not because of the specific books, just because of how random this haul is. This is what the quarantine has done to me. It's just unhinged my book buying and I'm just buying everything that I want. The Story of My Life by Helen Keller. Okay, so the other day I was remembering that movie, The Miracle Worker, that we all like had to watch as kids. And I was like, you know what? That's incredible. Didn't Helen Keller go on to like become a really prolific writer? And like, didn't she become like a super badass? Then I looked up her Wikipedia page and this is exactly what happened with Frida Kahlo. And now look where we are. <laughs> I literally, the other day, I was, yesterday, I was looking through um, my photos on my like camera roll and you can, on Apple photos, you can like search terms and like search faces. Like it recognizes people and it will show you every photo you've ever taken of a person. And I was scrolling through like with the different people categories that I had, like my brother, my mom, my boyfriend, me, my friends. And then it was Frida Kahlo's face. And I was like, what? And I clicked on Frida Kahlo and it showed me so many photos that I have saved to my camera roll of Frida Kahlo, of my Frida Kahlo books, of like just different random Frida Kahlo pictures I've taken. Frida Kahlo. Anyway, this is what happened. My Helen Keller experience is very similar to my Frida Kahlo experience where I completely read her um, Wikipedia page and I was so fascinated about her life and I wanted to learn more. So I ended up buying her book and I went with this uh, edition by Signet Classics because I have a lot of books by Signet Classics and I love these editions. I, they're very satisfyingly soft. They're not floppy, so that's too bad. Um, but they're really soft and just like very smudgy. I don't know how to explain that. They have like a lot of movability. It's, it's actually a lot shorter than it looks because this has a lot of her letters involved and I don't think that the letter, I think that the letters are just like bonus materials. So. Those are those. Okay. All right. Well, you know what? We have we have a theme. The last six books that I have here are all graphic novels. So I'm trying to remember. I feel like there's some books that I'm forgetting to show you. That's okay. That's okay. This is enough. <laughs> Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. This chair has a tilt and it keeps like slowly spinning me away. Okay, well, so <laughs> Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I read Radio Silence by Alice Oseman many, many years ago and I absolutely adored it. Um, and I've been meaning to read more by her ever since and Heartstopper absolutely is the place, like the next stop for me. I'm so excited about this book. I've heard so many people say great and wonderful things by it. Um, oh, Rainbow Rowell loved it. Gosh, that's wonderful. Um, it's got a really beautiful, like teal, light green color palette, um, which I really love in graphic novels when they, when they pick one color and they use that for the coloration. Love it. Um, I'm surprised by kind of how thick the lines are. I don't know if that means anything to anyone, but just as a person who reads a lot of graphic novels, the lines usually aren't this thick. <laughs> so, um, I think that sounds, it looks really cool. Okay, we're starting a third pile. I can't be bought. No, I want it to show up. Then I have New Kid by Jerry Craft. Super excited about this. This is about a character who is in seventh grade 
He loves drawing, he goes to a new school, and he's the only black kid in his class, and so it's about him, like, feeling like he's weird, and like he doesn't fit in, and trying to, I mean, this is what I get from the bio. What do I know? I haven't read it. Um, I'm a fraud. What can I say? That's what a book haul is. It's a, it's a, it's an experiment in being a fraud. We're so close. Okay, next up I got Clumsy by, yeah, this is why I know I'm forgetting other books, because I bought this book with some other books and they're not here like I definitely haven't shown you this one look how beautiful this book is the hour of the star by Clarice Lispector so many people have told me to check out this author that she's like the greatest thing that's ever come out of Brazil um I have to stop though I'll just I'll show you what I've got clumsy is a graphic novel um it has a very simplistic kind of funny art style and it's about the it seems like it's about, it doesn't have a bio and I just saw it in a new and used bookshop. Did I just show you something that was like not safe for work? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it seems to kind of be just a disjointed like collection of moments um, from a relationship. I thought it looked really cute. What's hilarious is that I then went on to drop it <laughs> on concrete and dented the corner, which is obviously very sad, but ironic because it's called clumsy. Okay, then I have Witch Boy or The Witch Boy by Molly Knox Ostertag. I just saw this one floating around and I thought it looked really beautiful. Um, I loved the idea of it. It's set in a household where boys grow up to be shapeshifters and girls grow up to be witches. And then our main character, uh, Aster, is a boy, but he is a witch. So I don't... I don't know more than that, but I think it looks so beautiful and I'm really excited. These are the kinds of graphic novels that I just sit down and fly through. Um, oh, the color palette is so rich. Two more guys, just two more, I swear. I got this place by, well, it's not by anyone, is it? The foreword is by Alicia, Alicia, Alicia Elliott from A Mind Spread on the Ground. Heck yeah. So this is um, 10 different stories illustrated by 10 different illustrators from um, indigenous communities in Canada. What's cool is because it's by 10 different authors, if I really like one of the art styles or stories, I can look them up and see what other work they've done. Okay, and then the last book I just randomly saw I don't even remember where, I don't remember. I don't remember, I don't remember how any of this happened. It's been months, I've been stuck in this house and I just buy books through the portal of the internet. I don't know how they get here. So Young Francis by Hartley Lynn. Hartley Lynn is another Canadian. I love it shouting out when the author is Canadian. Uh, Toronto, they're from Toronto. Um, this is a book about a young woman named Francis. Get it? Young Francis. Just seems like the story of a of a girl. <laughs> Why do we end on this one? The one I know like the least about. It's the story of a girl who's kind of like working, you know, more of a corporate job and she's trying to break free, find a better, more meaningful way of life. Um wow, that's gorgeous. But the 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 insides of this book are actually black and white, so Uh, I just love graphic novels so much. I've gotten obviously quite a few and I'm really hyped on that train. Okay, everyone, this was my book haul. Let me know if you've read any of these books that are sitting proudly behind me. Let me know which one I should get to first if you've read one that you're like, ah! Ariel, please read that one immediately. I'm also going to be taking August off of the internet. I have a couple of videos that will be coming out through then, but I'm hoping to read a lot more. So hopefully I make a little bit of a dent in this pile, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe I'll just buy 80 more books and read those instead, or just buy 20 more books and read my old books instead. It's a life's journey here with these books. Before I go, I need to thank Skillshare so much for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is a learning community where millions of creatives come together to take the next step in their creative journey. With thousands, literal thousands of classes on all sorts of creative topics like photography, illustration, creative writing, and so much more. It's also incredibly affordable at less than $10 a month. And if you use the link down in the description, you'll get two months for free, for free. <laughs> my friend sent me a film camera. Oh my God, let me show you. The camera hasn't arrived yet, but I've already bought the film. I am so excited to learn about film photography. It's something that has fascinated me 
four years, um, one of my favorite art forms to look at. And so I am absolutely going to be using Skillshare to learn about film photography. Like this beautiful course called Dynamic Portrait Photography, working with natural light. It has classes like direct light, backlight, lens flare, shadow play, props, all of these sorts of things that I'm so excited to learn about. So if you're also interested in learning about a new skill or a new topic, definitely check out the link down below. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring my video and supporting my channel. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!